In this tutorial, we will learn more about static colliders. So static colliders are entities that have a static collider component attached to them, and they don't move. They are not affected by gravity or any other collisions. Typically, you do not want to move static colliders around, but in case you still want to do so, you can do this via code. As you can see here, I have a sample scene with a simple sphere in front of me. It doesn't have any colliders attached to it yet. What I did before this scene is I enabled the debug physics option inside the transformation and gizmo options. I'm going to select this sphere here and then on the add component button, I'm going to click on it. And if I type in static collider, I will find the static collider. Component. We can also find this under the Physics tab. We can always enable and disable a static collider by clicking on the checkbox. Let's go over some of the default options that we have for a static collider. So the first option we have here is the collision group. So by default, you will get the default filter. And the collision group is something that you cannot change during runtime. The collision group works together with the collides with option right beneath it. We can say if a certain collider affects how it reacts colliding with other objects. However, since we are a static collider and we do not move, we can only say how it reacts to other kind of colliders like rigid bodies or character controllers. In a later tutorial, we'll see how we can play around with this to see if certain objects react to one another. Let's move on to another important option, and that is the restitution option. This means that if an object, for instance, a rigid body collides with it, then it defines how that object will react. If we set a restitution of zero, that means that all forces of impact are being absorbed almost instantly, and the object would stop moving immediately on impact. If the restitution is set to one, then no energy is lost during the moment of impact and you would get a sort of a bounciness effect for rigid bodies. Friction sets the surface friction. Again, this means whether a rigid body that would or character controller that collides with it loses any of its momentum that it has. Use rolling friction if you're dealing with round physics shapes, such as in this case a sphere, a football or a marble. We then have two options for continuous collision detection, abbreviated to CCD, and this is useful in case when you're dealing with fast moving entities, for instance bullets, and you want to prevent them from passing through other entities because they move so fast the actual physics updates might not be taking into account that they're colliding with other objects. Finally we have the trigger option. If its trigger is enabled, then no collisions actually react to one another. However, the actual event of a collision is being taken care of inside code. Lastly, we have this option here for adding collider shapes. And if we click this green button called add, we can add a physics shape for this object. And we have the default basic primitive shapes like box, capsule, cone, cylinder and sphere, which in this case we are going to select. And then you can see this red outline for a static collider. But we have other shapes available as well. For instance, we also have the infinite plane. And as the name suggests, this gives you an infinite plane collider on a mesh. And as you can see, I have a ground mesh selected here uh, in my scene, and I have attached the infinite plane collider shape to it. This means that simply it goes on in all infinite directions. Lastly, we also have the acid shape, and we'll get to that in a second. Now let's move on to a different kind of shape. Here we have a box entity, and if I select it and I go to the collider tab, notice that we have a box collider shape attached to it. Every single shape that we attach to an entity has its own properties. And they're mostly somewhat identical because they determine either the size, the offset, the rotation, or basically the scale of the 
physics shape. In case you're working with a 2D game, then you can select this checkbox to make sure that it is a 2D shape. Let's move on to the next entity. The next entity is a really basic X. And as you can see, it actually has two different shapes. And this is possible. We can add as many collider shapes to a single entity as needed. In this case, I've created a box for the blade of the axe and for the actual wooden part, I've created a little capsule. Lastly, we can also create acid colliders. If we select this cow and I would go to its static collider, notice that if I go to the collider shape, its collider shape is set to type acid. And this acid is referring to a Hull that is actually an asset inside my asset view. So in this case, I've already created it, but let's create one from scratch. I'm going to go to this asset view folder where my cow is. I'm going to delete the collider shape that I've previously created. If I want to create a rough physics shape for an existing model, I can do so by clicking on add asset, clicking on physics, and then clicking on the convex hull option, which creates a convex hull shaped collider for that given model. So what we have to do is now navigate to that model of our cow and select it. We now get this collider shape asset inside our asset view. Now let's first reapply this collider shape that we've just generated back to the cow. So I'm going to select the cow, click on static collider, and then where the shape for the acid collider is defined where it's currently empty let's drag in that freshly generated collider hull and immediately you see this outline of the collider hull for this cow model now this in some scenarios this may work perfectly just fine you just want to have a rough convex mesh or convex hull for your given model however in some situations you want to have a more detailed collider shape for this cow. You want to have a concave collider hull. And we can do this by selecting the collider shape and then we go to its properties and we select the decomposition checkbox. And as soon as we do this, you will see that the convex collider hull changes to a concave collider hull. Now, depending on the amount of detail you require for your model, you will have to play around with some of its properties. For starters, you can change the depth property, which, which changes how many sub-concave meshes it should generate in the background. For instance, if we change this to two, then you already have a less detailed concave mesh, and this might actually be suited in your game. All you have to think about is the higher this value, the more cost it has for the physics engine that Xenco uses in the background. The next tutorial, we will learn about rigid bodies.